You're planning to go on vacation with your puppy, but you're worried about flying with them for the first time? Then this video is for you. I've been taking my Westie dog Sammy with me on several flights since he was six months old and he always flies in the cabin with me. In this video I'm going to tell you everything you need to know so that you can fly with your puppy stress-free. Here's what you're gonna need and don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through each of these points. You'll need to book a pet-friendly airline and reserve your dog's spot on the plane. You'll need to make sure that your dog's size and weight fits the requirements of the airline. Your dog needs to have a microchip. Your dog might need to have a health certificate for domestic flights or a passport for international flights. You'll need a comfortable carrier bag that fits your dog and can be placed under the seat in front of you on the plane. And if you watch until the end of this video, I've got two bonus tips that I'm gonna share with you for how to make your puppy's flight as comfortable as possible. So keep watching. Now let's talk about each of these points. First of all, how do you know if the airline you chose accepts pets? Well, the first thing we do when we fly with a new airline is we check their website. Now, sometimes the website isn't very clear on whether they accept pets or not, or you can't really find the information, so here's a googling tip. Open Google and type the following. Site colon airline.com space pets. Let me give you an example. So let's say you're flying with Delta. So you're gonna type in site colon delta.com space pets. And there you go, here are all the pages of Delta's website that mention traveling with pets. Now all you need to do is read the section under carry on pets to find everything you need to know. You're welcome! Next step is to make sure that your dog is under the maximum weight that they accept for flights in the cabin. Every airline has a maximum weight limit for pets flying as carry ons. Most of them usually accept dogs up to 8 kilos, including the carrier bag. You'll find this on the website of the airline along with details about the carrier bag size, but we'll get there in a minute. My dog, for example, weighs about 7.8 kilos, which means I have to put him on a diet before we fly to make sure that him and the bag stay under the 8 kilos that is the limit. Let me know if you want me to make a future video here to share my tips on how to fly when your dog is super close to the weight limit. I've got a lot of tips and a whole routine that I do with Sami before we fly, so leave me a comment if you're interested to know more. Okay, now as you book your flight, you'll need to pay an extra fee for your pet. Here's a question I get a lot. People ask me, do you buy an extra seat for your dog? And the answer is no, it doesn't work like that. Dogs don't get a seat on the plane. Instead, they must be placed under the seat in front of you, inside their carrier bag. But you do have to pay a fee to get them booked on the flight. So, in a way, I guess you can say you're paying for their ticket too. The fee depends on the airline and the destination, but so far we paid between $60 and $200 for Sami each way. It's definitely not cheap, but it's cheaper than one extra seat, that's for sure. After booking your flight, make sure you call the airline directly to make the reservation for your dog. That is because they have a limited number of pets allowed on each flight, so even if you have already paid, it's not guaranteed that they will have a space available for your puppy. So what we do to avoid any surprises is, once we booked our flight, we call the airline directly to confirm that Sami will have his spot saved. Next step. As I mentioned before, your dog needs to have a microchip in order to fly. Most dogs get this when they are puppies, but if for any reason your dog isn't microchipped, you can do this easily by taking them to your vet's office. And they'll do the rest. Your dog might also need a health certificate, which is basically a paper from your vet attesting that the dog is healthy to travel. Many airlines don't ask for this at all for dogs who fly in the cabin, but some do. So again, it's best to check on the airline's website. Some airlines will need the certificate to be issued within 30 days from the departure date. Some ask for 10 days. If you're planning to fly internationally, your dog might need a passport. 
I got a passport for Sami when he was still a puppy and we took him on his first flight from Portugal to Greece. I got the passport at the vet's office, they made one for me on the spot and it cost around 25 euros. If you live in the United States and plan to fly internationally, check with your airline first to see if your dog needs a passport. I know that not every vet issues passports in the US and I honestly don't know how you can get one, but my advice would be to ask your dog's vet, they can probably guide you on what to do to get your dog a passport. You also need to make sure your dog's vaccines are up to date, specifically the rabies vaccine, which is mandatory for dogs over 12 weeks old for them to be allowed to travel in most countries. The rabies vaccine must be administered at least 30 days before the flight date to be considered valid. Next, you're going to need a comfortable carrier bag for your puppy to sit in during the flight. Ideally, look for a soft carrier bag as opposed to a plastic rigid one because the soft one is lighter and it fits better under the seat since you can slightly bend it to make it fit. As for size, check dimensions with the airline and test it with your puppy to make sure that they fit comfortably inside. Some airlines require the dog to be able to stand and turn around comfortably inside the carrier. Check if that's the case with your airline. For Westie dogs, I found it a little bit difficult to find a carrier bag that will fit my dog and will also fit the maximum dimensions that they give. So here's a secret tip here. If you get a soft carrier, you can go slightly oversized to make sure that your dog fits inside comfortably. Since it's soft, it will most likely collapse a little bit when you fit it under the seat in front because it's flexible and it bends without breaking. If you want more tips on how to choose the right carrier bag for your dog, watch this video where I'm walking you through how I chose Sami's carrier. I'm gonna put the link up here and in the description. Before we end this video, I have two more things I wanna share with you for how to make your dog's flight more comfortable. But before we get into that, if you're enjoying this video so far, give it a thumbs up and if you're new here, subscribe to our channel for more tips on how to fly with your puppy. Now, here are two important tips that you need to know before you board that flight. Don't feed your dog for about four to six hours before travel to avoid them getting sick on the flight. You can still feed them treats or tiny amounts of their meal, but I wouldn't feed a full meal because they could get an upset stomach. What you can give them is plenty of bottled water. In fact, make sure you pack a travel bottle for dogs to have it handy on the flight. And the last tip, if you believe your dog might be an anxious flyer, you can try giving them something to help calm them down. Always ask your vet first. My vet recommended CBD oil. She says it helps a lot with anxiety. Now, honestly, I haven't tried it because Sami was always calm on flights, but I trust my vet, so I'm passing along the advice to you. Whatever you do, make sure you opt for something natural and test it at home several days before the flight to minimize any potential side effects that might appear. Now, this is important, do not sedate or tranquilize your dog before the flight because there's a real risk of respiratory or cardiovascular problems that can appear at high altitudes. And some airlines specifically prohibit um, tranquilizing your dog on flights for this exact reason. You should find that information on the website, so make sure that you don't do that and opt for something natural instead. You'll find the links for everything I mentioned here in the description of this video below. I also have another video where I go into more detail on each of these points, so make sure you go watch that next. Let me know if you have any questions, leave them in comments. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Have a safe flight. Bye.